You know, uh, it is it is now 1.04 p.m. Sunday. Um, a year ago, I would still be at church right now if I was still a Christian, if I was still a believer. But I am no longer a believer. It does not require evidence. Okay? Right. Belief in the supernatural does not require proof. Uh, all you just have to do is have belief a belief or a faith in something that is not based in reality. And um, I realized uh, I was wasting my life based on myth, wasting my life based on believing in something that wasn't real, believing in a God that just don't really exist because I have not seen any evidence to support uh, any supernatural force outside of myself that you know is watching over all of us and protecting all of us so see I see uh, I see a lot going on in the world and I don't see any Jesus coming to rescue anybody I don't see any God coming to save anybody from all this evil that's going on around us mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I just, I'm just at a point in my life now where I'm, I'm just not going to accept what people tell me. I'm not going to waste my time in organized religion. I'm not going to waste my time believing in anything outside of myself if I don't see it. You know, if I don't see anything, I'm not going to believe it because I don't see it. Uh -huh. So, therefore, my life and try to do the best that I can in the situation that I'm in as a, uh, you know, so-called American Negro living in the United Slaves of America. Mm. You know, so I recognize where I am. I'm not naive as to, you know, what situation I'm in right now, which is probably not a, you know, a very good situation, obviously. It's not a good situation. Um, because you can't really live in a country like this unless you really have wealth. You, you can't really make it unless uh -huh. you really have wealth. Uh -huh. So I'm not I'm not naive to, to think that you know my life is just peachy, peachy keen, and it's just wonderful when I know it's not. You know. So that, with that being said. Well, that was our, our sister Nova, and this, of course, is the uh, Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Uh, I am now in Atlanta, Georgia, with our sister Nova Levine. Just going down the highway, chilling out, chilling. I, I really don't, you know, I don't like that word, chilling, because, because. When human beings chill, it's usually because you're dead in your own ice. Mm -hmm. I don't really don't like that. That you know, it reminds me of the, of death, the more. Mm -hmm. You know, but that's just a word. You know, it's a word that we, as soul brothers and sisters, that's a word that we use. And we know what chill means. You know, chill just means you know, chill just means that you know, relax basically. Mm -hmm. You know, relaxing type situation. I want to say, uh, the last few months, I have been going really, really hard on these pro, you know, the pro-black type folks. And I've also been going pretty hard on religion. The reason why, one of the reasons why I have, uh, I decided to go pretty hard on, on these pro-black, blackly black type folks is because many of them, they believe they are so smart, so intelligent, and whatever. And then they want to try to force themselves on somebody. You're not going to force yourself on me. 
That's not going to happen. I'm not going to be your slave. I don't give a damn what your belief is. I don't care what you think. If I tell you I'm not interested, and it's, just, you know, it's the same thing with uh, religious folks too. They think they can bully you. They think they can make mock of you, threaten you and all this stuff to force you to believe what they want you to believe and act the way they want you to act. It's not going to happen. You have a lot of people who will fight you to the death. It's not going to happen. Slavery is over. I'm not interested in being a slave to some African person or a slave to some god or whatever. I would hope that this god was real. Who am I not to wish that this God wasn't real? I would hope God would be real. Because if God was real, I could shut up. God come and handle your business. I feel. You can get angry at me all that you want to. But time has revealed that these gods do not exist. Time has revealed either God don't exist or your God don't have any power. It's impossible for your God, if this God truly loved us, to allow this to go on for thousands of years. Not for, not for a few days, not for a few months, but for thousands of, of, of years. To innocent people, people who have not done anything, children coming into the world, coming into poverty and suffering. Why would a child even like yourself why would a child why should we be subjected to, to this kind of harsh treatment and we haven't even had a chance to do anything it's not fair it's not fair to the child and I question a God who is a parent who would be the parent that would allow their child to, to continue to suffer in the manner that we have been made to suffer going on like thousands of years. So, we're just making conversation, you know, riding down the highway. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to check in because this is what I call Soul Liberation Day Week. And uh, my real big talk, my real big speech. I think we're gonna, we might have something pretty decent. We have a subject that's coming up. I think might be pretty entertaining. Uh, probably Tuesday. But uh, yeah, the real, the real uh, talk that I want to have is on on uh, Saturday. Um. Who am I to not want a, a, a God to come handle this business? But, <laughs> see, this is my thing. Don't tell me about your God and your belief. I want to know. I want to see this power. I want to see it now. You can't rush God. You don't tell God what to do. That's because you can't do nothing. That's why. And every time somebody uh, make a claim, you always talk about, well, prove it. Show and prove. But when it comes to God, God don't never have to show and prove. If God have all this power, God got all this going on, show and prove. Nothing. I don't care how much you pray. I don't care how righteous you try to be. Nothing, nothing changes. Right now, I got a friend who is convinced that God because of his current situation with his job and him, you know, being in a situation he, he uh, doesn't like and because he, he really hates what he does for a living because he used to be a radio personality years ago. Mm -hmm. And now he's 
working somewhere that is beneath his talent, obviously. It is beneath his talents, his skill level, and he hates it, absolutely hates it, and he thinks that God is punishing him for, for his current condition. And I got to try to convince this brother that there is no God. Mm -hmm. I got to try to convince him that you're not being punished by any God because God does not exist. Not according to what you think. Right. Okay? But see, this is what Christianity has done to his mind. Mm. It has poisoned his mind to believe that because he's not successful anymore, okay, because he works where he works and lives below the poverty poverty line because of his pay. You know, he lived he lives above he lives below. I'm sorry, he lives below the poverty line because of his pay, because of how much money he makes. Because of that, he feels that God is punishing him because he doesn't have anything. And I, I used to have that same mindset. I used to feel like because I was going through all I was going through that I was being punished by God. Mm -hmm. But then I stopped. I stopped thinking that way after I realized that that's not real none of it that whole ideology is is uh, uh, based on myth the whole ideology Christianity mm -hmm. all of it Islam Islam makes no difference what the religious you know, belief system is Judaism all of it is based on myth it's not even real nope this brother, because he lives below the poverty line because of his pain, he feel like, you know, okay, well, God has reduced me to nothing, basically. He feels like God has reduced me to nothing. I am now working here when I used to have a career in radio. So he feel like God is punishing him because of that. And he's been saying the same thing for a since I've been knowing the brother, he's been saying the same thing. I met him back in 2006. He's been saying this same thing since maybe 2007 when he told me about his career in radio and and he came to Atlanta to try to get back in radio, but it did not pan out for him. It did not work. He feels He's been saying the same thing. He feels like God is punishing him. And this is the damage that Christianity, Islam, and Judaism has done to our people. Yeah. This is the mind control damage that these religions have done. That this ideology from the Bible and from the Quran has done to our people. Mm-hmm. Mm. Send a shout out to Brother Talil in the chat room. Send a shout out to, to, to us. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so. Well, for me, it, it, it actually, it actually happened a little different because one of the worst things, as you know, that happened to me was when I went to the nut house. I never thought that it was God punishing me. I knew what the situation was. It was dealing with a silly Negro and some racists. That's what, that's why I was in the crazy house. Had nothing to do with God's punishment. That was the reason why. And also I was silly myself, knowing what the end result would, would be. I just said, the hell with it. Being stupid and allowed, allowed to put myself in that situation. So I never, I never, uh, believe that God was punishing me. However, as a believer in God, I said, well, I know that I'm, you know, that I should have handled this differently. And I don't, I do not mind accepting the consequence of the punishment. 
But when one year went by, two years, three years, four years, I'm like, wait a minute, God. Wait a minute. First of all, yeah, I messed up. But it wasn't because I was doing something wicked, stealing and doing something to somebody. Something, hell, I was somebody was stealing from me, lying and cheating me. That's the reason why. So why would you, God, allow me to continue to be in this position and yes, I acted in a, in a manner that could have been different, but I don't deserve no one, two, three, four, five going on years to be locked up in this damn place. So now I'm questioning this God. What kind of just God, a just God would not allow this. A God that has power would not allow this. Now, because you want to put blame on me, you want to make up all these excuses of why God wouldn't do this and God wouldn't do that for me. And blame me because this God shows no power, this God shows no interest. So when this God don't do something, you want to blame the people. I heard this. I said, where was your God during uh, September 11th? And this God allowed all kinds of people, all kinds of religion and races, all, and they still dying. A lot of those first responders and people that went to, to New York to deal with that 9-11 tragedy, they are still dying to this day from cancer, from breathing in those, those that dust from that, uh, from that, uh, the airplane, supposed to be airplane crash. So the people are still dying. What was this God? And even this year, in the, in the synagogue, in the mosque, in the church you are a believer in God and get shot down and killed right there trying to pray trying to worship this God this God don't do nothing for you so I'm in the so I'm a believer in God don't tell me well maybe you wouldn't sincere you're not in a position to tell nobody how sincere they are that's between me and my God that's between me God knows how I felt God knows my sincerity but the problem, I, I never, I finally had to realize I realized that oh, before I even get to that point what made me finally realize that God don't exist is that I called on Allah, I called on Jesus I just sent out a prayer to all guys just help me none of these guys None of these guys responded. So out of desperation, I said, well, I sell my soul to the devil. And I called out to Satan. And look, I don't mind serving you, Mr. Satan, whoever you are, as long as you get me out this crazy house. And I know Satan's supposed to want your soul. Yeah, I'm laying around this crazy house. Called out for the devil. And even the devil didn't show up. I'm like, oh, now I get it. Now I get it. God don't exist. The devil don't exist. All this stuff. And then, I was listening to uh, Pastor Ray Hagen. And I was listening to him talking. He said that Jesus never historically existed. I'm like, what? if Jesus didn't historically exist, that means it's Islam, Christianity is fake, because they're all based and rooted in this in the belief of, of, of Abraham. I'm like, all this stuff is, is fake. I've been bamboozled. I've been tricked. I wish Malcolm was here, because Malcolm... Still, even though he left the nation of Islam, hold held on to his religion. I would tell Malcolm today, you was 
you still being tricked. You're still being bamboozled. Because <laughs> God is God. You know, this God ain't did a death. Matter of fact, speaking of Malcolm X, where was his God when this sucker raised up a, a, a sawed-off shotgun and murdered him in cold blood? Where was that? And the only thing y'all do is make excuses. That's all you do. Well, you see, uh, Malcolm was this. You know, you blame the victim. You blame the person because you know and I know this God should be doing something for us. And you make keep making excuses why God don't do this, why God don't do this. But you see, if God don't exist, it explains everything. That's why God don't do this. That's why God don't do that. So now you need to... So now you need to understand that if you don't get it done, it don't get done. You have to learn how to depend on yourself. And if there's, if there's a God, it's the God in you. You're a child of God, then you need to be dependent and looking upon the God in yourself. So that's what I had to end up doing. I had to learn how to look into inside myself. The God that's in me. The, my own personal talents. I had no idea of how I was going to get out of my crazy house situation. But I knew I had to do it. Use my brain to figure it all out. And the reason why I'm talking to you right now is because I figured it all out. Took some time, but I figured it all out. I just made a video called The Brain. Something black people don't use. And if we was using our brain properly, and if we had the correct information, our situation would be over. And see, that's really how God answers your prayers, because God gave you everything that you, that you need. Gave you your brain, use it. We don't want to. We waiting on some divine person, Messiah, Savior, all that kind of good stuff. It don't work that way. We have to take take control of our destiny. We have to take control of our personal lives. And we have to take control of ourselves as a people. Even though folks do terrible things. Like when I was locked up. I couldn't spend all my time blaming the white man. Blaming these people. They're not going to change. I'm going to have to depend on myself. Blaming them is not going to change my condition. I had to learn how to. Depend on myself, think for myself, and when that happens, my condition changed. And on that note, we at our destination. Holler at with y'all later on. Peace, and uh, hopefully y'all join me later on Saturday, December the 7th, 2019, for Soul Liberation Day. And we are the 5,000. Peace.